Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Adam Welch. Today we're going to be talking about something that gets mentioned and discussed quite a bit, but never really in depth. Most people just say something about it and then they move on, but that's going to change today. We're going to be talking about something called the reciprocal rule in photography, or if you're extra pretentious, you can call it the multiplicative inverse. So really all the reciprocal rule is, is a way for you to at least guesstimate the longest exposure you can use while shooting your camera handheld, in your hands, handheld, without letting the motion, the camera shake, be readily apparent in your final photo. Now, of course, this is not a real rule. I hope I don't have to tell you that. We all can hold the camera more steady than some people, some not as steady. So this is just a general guideline, really. I hate to even say that kind of a cliche, but don't take it to heart. Simply put, the reciprocal rule states that your maximum shutter speed or your slowest shutter speed, the longest shutter speed that you can have, should never be slower than the reciprocal of your focal length. That means one over your focal length in millimeters. Now, the reason why this works is because your focal length directly impacts the field of view that your camera sees of your subject. And the tighter your field of view, the more readily apparent camera shake can be as perceived by your camera. Let me show you. This is Paul. I picked Paul up at Roswell, New Mexico. I'm not sure where he's from originally, but I'm shooting this video with a 24 millimeter lens and you can see a little bit of camera shake, but not much as I hold that camera handheld. Now I switch out to a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. This is at 70 millimeters. We're getting a little bit tighter field of view because of the longer focal length. And you can really start to see that camera shake begin to manifest itself. And now moving on to 300 millimeters. Yeah, it's really not so good handheld. So why is this? Why does the reciprocal rule work? Uh, I've spent a lot of money and I've invested a lot of time and energy into coming up with some graphics to demonstrate how your focal length affects the field of view, which in turn affects the perceived motion, your camera shake, and why the reciprocal rule actually works. So let's move over there and let's take a look. All right, so let's say we have our camera. Perfect camera. Of course, we will have to put a little shutter button on our camera there, of course. And this camera has something absolutely magical. It has this special lens that can be absolutely anything we want in terms of focal length. It can be an eight millimeter lens, a 4,000 millimeter lens. It doesn't matter. But what it's going to help us do is demonstrate how the field of view widens and narrows based on the focal length of our lenses. And that determines why or how the reciprocal rule will work for us. So let's take a look. So we've been out enjoying ourselves today. We found this nice little tree that we're going to make a picture of. We can pose the image and I even went ahead and added a happy little tripod to our camera here because, hey, we can all use a little bit of extra support. And what we're going to show is how the focal length of our lens will affect the field of view of how our camera perceives the scene and therefore how apparent camera shake can be depending on the constricted field of view. So let's take a look. We've started off with a 24 millimeter lens, you know, because I've wrote 24 millimeter on here. And you can see that gives us a fairly wide field of view here. So according to the reciprocal rule, we would have a shutter speed no slower than 1 24th of a second. That's why that when you have wide angle lenses, the perceived shake isn't as great. So what happens when we zoom in a little bit or use a lens of a longer focal length, like an 85 millimeter lens. You'll notice everything stays the same, but our focal length in effect our zoom is going to make that field of view much smaller in relation to the subject here. And in turn, the perceived motion for our camera or our image sensor in our camera is going to be more noticeable. That's why as you move out in that focal length, you start to get that little bit of a shake in your camera, depending on how steady you can hold your camera, just like we saw with Paul over there. And the effect becomes more noticeable as we move up in focal length, let's say this is a 300 millimeter lens, everything else has remained the same. But since the focal length has increased, that field of view has became really, really narrow. Now, the reason why the reciprocal rule actually works is because 
The field of view is what causes the camera to perceive motion more readily. It's not the actual focal length of the lens. That's a byproduct. The focal length of the lens determines the field of view as perceived by your camera of the subject. And as that gets longer, your shutter speed or your maximum shutter speed has to be faster according to the reciprocal rule to compensate for that increased focal length and that decreased field of view. So it's actually pretty simple. So yeah, it really is just that simple. The reciprocal rule, a great way for you to at least approximate the shutter speed that you can get down to depending on your lens to help avoid camera shake. Now, of course, some of us can hold our cameras more steady than others. Some of our hands aren't quite as solid and that's okay. Just use this as an estimation and you'll be just fine. Now I urge you to head over to Digital Photography School. I've written a in-depth article on this very subject and I will put the link down in the description there, but there's really no substitute for seeing it on video. So if you have any questions about that, either comment over there at DPS or put them down in the comments here and I'll get to you as soon as I can. All right, that is going to wrap up this super quick explanation of the reciprocal rule. I still like to call it multiplicative inverse. I hope you got something out of it. Again, if you have any questions, just let me know. And if you did enjoy the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment if you feel like it. I would really appreciate it. And hey, it helps the channel out a lot. Until next time, I'm Adam Welch. Thanks for being here.